we can have hope in the midst of this trying situation. Yes, John chapter 16, verse 33 tells us that in Jesus we have peace. But the next statement tells us, but in this world you have tribulation. And it is my prayer that we can get some lessons out of the life of David, how he dealt with his trying situation, the spiritual distress that he was confronted with, and apply it into our daily life as we face these trying moments. Because faith is very important, brothers and sisters. It is recognized. But that we are saved by grace through faith. And this faith must be strengthened. And God used a tool, a specific tool, in order to strengthen our faith. As recorded in James chapter 1, verse 3, that the trying of our faith will produce patience. And in verse 4, it tells us that when patience is made perfect, it will do a tremendous work in our spiritual life. So let's rejoice. According to James chapter 1 verse 2, when we fall into diverse temptation, but in the process of rejoicing, we cannot deny that we are human beings. We are affected and feel the pain and the pangs of the temptation of the affliction permitted by God to happen to us. So here it is, the text we have. Tells us about David's experience. And in his experience, we can draw some lessons that we can apply in our life today. He recognizes the source of his trouble, the enemy. The enemy persecuted his soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness. Therefore, in my spirit, overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is desolate. In other translation, the word used for desolate is distress. His heart within him is in distress. I have seen this place when we went to Israel. Our tour guide, I don't know if you've been there, the tour guide said, this is the place where David tried to hide himself from Saul because he was hunted. And of course, as what I have, I have told you ahead of time, that David was being persecuted, he acknowledged that, crushed to the ground, being made to dwell in darkness, and having an overwhelmed spirit, and having a distressed heart. So all of this is giving us the life picture of David. His miserable, need of help. And my wife told me this morning that an acquaintance in the Philippines was announced dead, an old lady. The examination of the heart appeared to be normal, everything normal, and the granddaughter who is a nurse by profession said that she might have died because of stress. Is it true that stress is killing people? Yes. A broken spirit dries the bones. If the bones are responsible in producing our defense system, and if the bones dry up, then it answers to the physical destruction. So stress indeed is very detrimental to our being. 
spiritual as well as physical being. He was persecuted, rushed to the ground, being made to dwell in darkness, having an overwhelmed spirit. And in verse 7 of the same chapter, 143, David tells us that uh, his, his spirit is, is worn out. That the kind of, of experience he had. Not only did David had an experience of the same thing, another individual in the New Testament by the name of Paul made this declaration, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. For we which live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. <coughs> Something is wrong in this world. Comparing the life of David and comparing the experience of Paul when he said, hard depressed on every side, perplexed, persecuted, struck down, almost delivered to death. We have to understand how we are going to deal with this because we are involved, because we all desire to become children of God, we all desire to be godly. And Paul says, he wrote Timothy, that all who would live godly in Jesus Christ will what? Suffering persecutions, will experience spiritual distress. And we need to know how to protect this body because our body is the temple of God. We need to love this body because this body is bought with a price. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. So we have to take concern of this body. So let's now try to discover how David made an intervention in order to protect himself when he was in spiritual distress. Here it is. He used meditation. In Psalm 143 verse 5, David said, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. And I would like to believe that when David made a statement regarding the days of old, the things that the Lord had done to him, his mind was led to once again think of experience when he was confronted by Goliath. How did the Lord deliver him? Isn't it a wonderful thing sometimes when we are facing trial, trying moments to think of what happened in, in the past, how the Lord dealt with us? Amen. You know, Amen. when I am confronted with a problem in terms of hunger, I would always think of my younger days when I didn't have food, but the Lord had provided a tar apple tree where I can climb and eat the fruit of the apple tree. I would always remember the things when I ran out of food, feeling hungry, but the Lord gave me sleep in order that I can forget my hunger and that gives strength when I face trying moments, especially in terms of economic depression, that I know that the Lord is not going to leave me now because He helped me in the past. He provided something that I can survive. So David remember that this is the best kind of medicine, a therapeutic thing to do, to remember the days of old and to meditate on all that the Lord has done. Think of the creation of the Lord, what he has made out of nothing. Isn't it that our God is a powerful God? He is indeed a powerful God, a powerful God. I ponder, I ponder upon the works of, of your hand, David said. And then another thing that he did, I just would like to make a reaffirmation of this. This has been said during the, the story time for the children, the importance of prayer. Now David have recognized this. 
He recognized the importance of prayer. He said, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. Not because I am a deserving person to be heard because of my good works, but in your faithfulness and righteousness, I come to you for relief because God is merciful. He prayed that God would not hide his face from him. Do you know of an individual in the Bible, a very significant individual that felt one time in his life that he was left alone by God? It was Jesus Christ. Right? When God, when Christ said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Don't you know that David said the same thing? He said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If you have your Bibles, can you turn it to the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse, verse 1? It seems that David or Jesus Christ mouth the statement of David, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's a terrible experience, brothers and sisters. When the face of God is hidden, that we cannot see, probably because of the intensity of sin, probably because of the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. So the prayer of David is telling us that, Lord, please do not hide your face from me. And another prayer that he said, let me hear your loving kindness in the morning. Let me hear thy loving kindness in the morning. He recognizes that this loving kindness of the Lord can sustain him in his trying moment, in the moment when he is like being trampled on the ground. God's loving kindness is very important. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. You are a God who forgives. You are gracious. You are tender and kind. That is our God. And David said, let me hear your loving kindness in the morning. We might be too occupied of focusing our eyes to our problems, forgetting to hear the loving kindness of God. The loving kindness of God is very valuable. His unfailing love is important to us. People take refuge in the shadow of his love, in the shadow of his wings. David himself had recognized that. Psalm 69 and 16, answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. So this is the same David that recognizes the unfailing love of Jesus Christ, the unfailing love of God, is the one who made a prayer in Psalm 143, asking God, God, let me hear thy loving kindness in the morning. A very good therapeutic intervention when we are in distress. Because your love is better than life, as according to David himself. Your love is better than one than life. I went to the Philippines, stayed there for two weeks since March 28th, and it was my privilege during staying there for the last Sabbath of my stay that I was invited in a church where I pastored before, and they were running a program, a fasting program after after the communion service, and my, the pastor of the church, 
which was once upon a time my student in this design academy, who stood up and related this experience. And this is very encouraging because the Bible tells us in Nehemiah, in Isaiah 63, verse 7, I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. I will tell. So this pastor started telling his experience, expressing the goodness of the Lord. They were sailing from one part of the island, trying to, to cross into the channel, going to the place where we had our missionary activity last year. The boat, the bigger boat that was to be the boat they're going to, to take, left them. And they were forced to look for a smaller one. There were five of them, four young people plus him. And when they all were loaded in, in, into the boat, so the distance of the water to the top of the boat is just like this. But they have to go. Because the next morning, Saturday, there will be baptism in that island, they called Kinatarkan. So they prayed to God, and they started to do that because it was just, it was it was afternoon time, and the sea began to look white in some areas. Mean to say, waves are starting to be activated. But in spite of that, they went on. They reached the middle of the sea, nothing happens. And according to him, when they were about 15 minutes to the shore, there was a quick move and the boat capsized. And five of them found themselves swimming in the sea. They said, we have to turn the boat again. Turn the boat. And they did. But the thing here, there was the current is pushing them back into the middle of the sea. So even how much they tried to go to the shore, they were just standing still and little by little sometimes moving back into the middle of, of the sea. And he said, this is dangerous. And I am afraid for the life of this four young people. He told them, let's pray to God. There's even to send us somebody to help us. It was already six o'clock in the evening. It started to be dark. And they started praying. They prayed. And you know, he said, a 30 minute stay in the water seems to be one day. It was too long. They prayed, still praying for help. And he said to his companion, I heard sound of, of an engine. And he said, we did not hear anything. He said, I hear a sound of an engine. And after 20 minutes, the sound was acknowledged by his companion. There, is a motorboat coming, but not towards the direction they suppose, because it seems to me that it's heading towards another direction. But it's a prayer, and he told his companion, when I tell you, shout, let's shout together at the top of our voice, because he understood that, you know, small boats in the Philippines, it's, the engine is still there, it's there, and usually, the one operating is sitting beside the engine and it would be hard for the man operating the boat to hear the sounds coming from somewhere else. But they prayed that the Lord will help them. It was December 14, according to him. Lo and behold, they shouted all together at the top of their voice. And the man you know, manning that motorboat. Heard them. To his surprise, they were told by the man, 
I heard your voice clearly asking for help. What a miracle. That's why every December 14th, you know, they used to text each other and try to thank God for the wonderful things that the Lord has done for them. So they were saved and they were able to perform the baptism. But one thing, who saved them? May God. Who was used as, as an instrument? A backslider. A seventh day Adventist backslider. Fishing, you know, make even during Friday night. Friday night. And he recognized the pastor that needed help. But the point there is that it's nice to speak out and tell the good things that the Lord has done for us. I cannot help but share with you my distress for two months. You have seen me during the first month of distress. I was so hungry because of cough. Irritating cough, itchiness in my throat, and I cannot help but even having without a sleepless night. It was so haggard, so tiresome. My wife felt so tired also listening to my cough. Stayed for one month, and there was a time that I went to the doctor. And he prescribed, she prescribed to me of an antihistamine thing because she said this might be an allergy to something else. So I just took the medication without reading the notification in the lab that that kind of medication is contraindication or I have to tell my doctor that I have an enlarged prostate. And I have an enlarged prostate. Taking that medication, which I su should supposed to tell my doctor, and that night after taking the medication, I did not have a very pleasant sleep. Uh, there's the feeling of being, and I, I just get let out of the fluid. So what I did is just to force, put force in it. And so much so, probably, that the prostate was irritated. And uh, I remember that night we went to the small group. The host prepared a juice that looks like a blood. I took like three cups of the juice. And in the morning, when I look at my pee, it looks like blood. And I said to myself, it's because of the drink that I, that I drank. I told my wife, but how come? That is already more than 24 hours. I, I, when I pee, it's still the same. My wife said, this is not normal. This is not already the juice thing. This is something. <coughs> so it was found out that probably because of the pressure, the blood vessels that scatters on top of my prostate, you know, burst some of them. And then that's the reason why that there's the discoloration of my my urine, and it was confirmed <coughs> when I passed out blood clots. Indeed, there is bleeding that is taking place outside inside my my body. Negative thoughts hustled my mind. I thought of my I thought of my uncle who died at the age of 85 years old because of prostate cancer. So I said to the Lord, Lord, if this is it, so just help me. I'm just a human being trying to fight the negative emotions. I would like to strengthen myself. And I seem to become passive during the time and tell the Lord, you know, it's up to you. You know, when you are grieving, Dr. Jack, there are stages. And right away, jump to the acceptance acceptance stage of 
of the grieving process, but sometimes you know bounce back to uh, to the uh, to the denial. This is not happening to me, and sometimes blaming myself. Why did I not do something else before this happened? And there is that a little bit amount of fear also myself trying to think that I'm I'm not too old person. I'm still young compared to the rest of the people of my age, I can still run like a 40 years old individual. So Lord, how come? How come? Went to the doctor. The doctor said, you have problem with your prostate. It's bleeding. But it was the same doctor that told me that, said to me that your chances of having prostate cancer is very slim after having all those laboratory examinations. So that gives me a sort of a relief. But at the back of my mind, I said, what if the doctor did not see some problem in my prostate when he did the biopsy? What if the doctor did not see something problem in my prostate when I have that MRI? My mind was, again, brought to remember the experience of my brother-in-law. He went to the doctor, he was examined, everything looks fine. But after that, just for after a month probably, he started to feel that his tummy is, was getting bigger and bigger. Went back to the doctor, it was found out that there was that growth at the back of his intestine. Only to find out that he was already in the late stage of cancer. My brother will die. So that gets into my mind. What if? What if? But thank God. For one month, I sustained that bleeding experience. I went to the Philippines. When I, when I lift up heavy things, after that, I would pass out blood in my teeth. So my wife said, don't, don't carry heavy loads. But thank God, I would like to tell you that two days before I leave the Philippines for the United States, I noticed that when I lift heavy things and then pass out some urine, there were blood. So I used, I used to, I used to look at the fluid coming from me with blood, and I would even, even think before peeing that blood will. Be coming out. Blood clots will be will be there. But for two days, I did not I did not see. I said to myself, Lord, uh, this is already one month that I've been having this one. So I, I don't know if you have plans for me. I remember of that moment having the issue of blood for how many years? For 12, 12 years. Mine is just one month. Just one month. And I know that the Lord has a plan. He let me experience that so that I can share it with you today. I will, that I can tell you that indeed the Lord is, is good. He protects me. He saves me because He still has a purpose for my life. And it's a very good therapeutic kind of thing for me, brothers and sisters. And I know that many more trials will come after this. And it is my prayer that the Lord will direct my mind to think of what He has done for me in the past. That I can get strength from it and hope for the salvation of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, just would like to remind you that meditating and God, His creation, His, the things that He has done for you, is one approach that they can use. Asking Him that we will hear His loving kindness is one of the approaches. There are many more things that I can discuss in the chapter regarding the intervention of Joseph, or of David, with his spiritual distress, but I will not permit. I'll stop right here.
And may the Lord bless us all. Continue reading Psalm 143 and discover yourself that therapeutic intervention used by David.